1787, an architect invented the perfect prison and called it the Panopticon. The prisoners would be seen wherever they were, but would never know if they were being watched. It was designed to control the prisoners using surveillance alone and was seen as the ultimate power of mind over mind. No Panopticons were ever built, but Tony Blair's most expensive legacy will be to have turned the entire country into a perfect prison. The government wants to put a tracking device in every car on the road. Surveillance cameras are being connected to directional microphones, as well as facial recognition software, so they will always know where you are and what you are saying. But we can make choices in spending too. And instead of wasting hundreds of millions of pounds on compulsory identity cards as the Tory right demand. Let that money provide thousands of extra police officers on the beat where they can actually protect people. But now New Labour want to spend billions of our money on compulsory ID cards. We will pursue identity cards because they're right. We think it is legitimate and right in this day and age to ask people to carry identity cards. It is the right thing to do. Within a few years, you will be forced to carry an ID card, which will store a gold mine of private information, which will be uploaded to a database called the National Identity Register. Every time you interact with the state, it will form an audit trail, so the government will know your entire life's history. This will be linked to your medical records, your school records, and your DNA structure. Gordon Brown has already said that he will sell your information onto big businesses, whereas computer hackers will be able to get it for free. Say if we introduce identity cards, which after all, large numbers of countries in the world have, that this is an authoritarian act, is absurd. It is truly absurd. Lots of other countries do have ID cards. But in most cases, they were forced onto the people by authoritarian dictators like Napoleon. ID cards were introduced to Britain during the Second World War. Churchill regretted taking our dearly valued liberties and promised to scrap them once the war was over. But he lost the post-war election before he could, and the incoming Labour government kept them on. The information on the cards shot up, and police began to demand them from people at random. In 1950, Harry Wilcock, an ordinary man from Leeds, took a stand. The police ordered him to show his ID card, but he refused and said, I am a liberal and I'm against this sort of thing. He was arrested, but fought his case to the highest court in the land. And as the cards were so hated, he became a national hero. The judge ruled that to demand an ID card from all and sundry has turned law-abiding citizens into law-breakers. The government abolished the cards and gave the nation back its privacy. In Rwanda, the Belgian colonial government introduced ID cards to split up the native Tutsi and Hutu tribes by their physical differences. In 1994, the country devoured itself as the Hutus mercilessly attacked the Tutsis. An ID card marked Tutsi would get you killed at any roadblock. As everyone had an ID card, it made the genocide incredibly efficient and nearly a million lives were taken in only a hundred days. The secret police in Soviet East Germany had a file on every man, woman and child with their history from the cradle to the grave which were used as a means of control. They couldn't computerize these records, as they didn't have the technology. If they had, it would look like the National Identity Register. There are distinct advantages in a national identity scheme that could not just help us disrupt terrorists and criminals. The fact that there was a biometric identity card system in place in Spain did not prevent the Madrid bombings. We know the bombers were very careful to carry ID. Mohammed Siddiqui Khan actually gave his ID to three of the other bombers to carry um, and made sure it was found at the scene. The card or the record doesn't have you know, terrorists stamped on it in, in yellow. These are just people. Mohammed Atta showed a perfectly valid passport when he got on board that flight which he later flew into the World Trade Center.